I want to jump into today's topic, which is display images. I'll start by sharing my screen because that's we're going to spend most of our time in Mylio and in some external editors. And editing is one of the things that I think is the most fun when it comes to photography. And there's a lot of different ways that you can work with your images and save them. And I'm going to go over a couple of those options here today. So the first thing we want to talk about is display images. What the heck is a display image? So when it comes to Mylio Photos, a display image is something that has underscore display in the file name that tells Mylio to stack it with the original. So what I want to start by doing here is going and taking a look at some Apple pictures. So these are from my iPhone. And let me find an image here that I know has one of these display images here. Here we go. The way you can tell if an image has a display image or a display copy is going to be over here if you open up the info panel. If you're not seeing this panel, you can go ahead and click on the info button here to go ahead and expand that. Under the file name, you'll see that you have your image name here, and then there's some abbreviations that show up. And this indicates the types of files that are associated with a particular photo. In this case, my original image is a DNG, which is an Apple RAW, Pro RAW image from my iPhone. It also has an MYB file, which contains information about that file that's unique to Apple. And then it also has a JPEG. This JPEG is my display image or my display copy. And that is the edit that I did in Apple Photos on my phone before it was synchronized to Mylio Photos. So if you go into Apple Photos, let's say you take a picture on your iPhone, you go into Apple Photos, you make a few edits. If that happens before Mylio is aware of that picture, then that gets saved as this JPEG display image. So your original is still preserved. And then you also have a JPEG with your edits. So let's take a look at what this looks like in the file system, because I think that's the easiest way to understand this. I'm going to go ahead and say reveal in external. And I'm going to go ahead and choose to find this on my main vault here. Here we go. It's going to take a second for it to load. And we'll let that pull up the finder window. So you can see when I click on this, it's pulling up my image, which is at 4512, same as right here. And you see that it has underscore display. Below that, I have the 4512 DNG, which you can look at the difference there. The display image is a little bit brighter, a little bit better exposed. The DNG is unprocessed. And then there's also the MYB file, which is just an information file. If I go back over here to Mylio, and let's say I want to add some other information about this picture that's descriptive. So let's go ahead and scroll down. It already has GPS information. Let's go down and add some keywords. I'm going to start here with my smart tags and use those as suggestions. So blue is a dominant color here. Let's go ahead and check that. That promotes it to a keyword. And let's go ahead and say hill and mountain and mountainous, plant works, sky works, trees. Those are all great keywords. So what I've done is I've taken those smart tags and I've promoted them to keywords. And by doing this change to the metadata, that's going to prompt Mylio Photos to create an XMP metadata file. So I've made some changes. Mylio saves them to an XMP. And you'll notice now, instead of just having the DNG, the MYB, and the JPEG, we now also have an XMP file. And again, that's going to show up in our file system here. Now we have that associated XMP. So what Mylio is doing is it's stacking these different types of files together in the way it's being displayed in Mylio. And the display image is one of those files in that stack. So this happens automatically when you're working with Apple Photos in some instances. You can also use this manually to stack edits that you make in other applications with the originals. So you have a couple of different options here. You can make the display copies, you can stack them, or if you prefer, you can have your edited images side by side with the originals. There's no one right answer here. It's just a matter of how you like to go through your library, how you like to view things. And if you're looking for a really tight, organized view where you only want to see your edited images, a display copy might be a great option for you. So let's go ahead and walk through how that's done. I'm going to go ahead and go back here, clear out this filter, and let's do a few edits. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll back up here to the top of my list, and let's find some photos to work with. I recently got back from a trip with my camera club, so I have lots of fun photos here. So let's grab 
let's see, let's grab one of these sunrise photos because these are super pretty. Here we go. Let's grab this one here. So it looks a little bit dull and we can definitely make this look better. There's a lot of great information here. The sky is really pretty. We've got a beautiful foreground. It just needs to be brought out in post-processing. So if we take a look here at the file name, we have our original Canon CR3, which is a Canon RAW file. And it has that XMP file because I did add manually that GPS information. So now what we can do is I'm going to go ahead and go to the photo menu, choose open with, and I wanna open this in Photoshop. If you go to the open with menu and the application that you wanna use is not in that list, if you're on Mac, you can just go down to other and that's gonna bring up your applications folder and you can choose any application that will open that particular file. So I'm gonna just go ahead and scroll down here to Photoshop 2024, grab Photoshop and choose open. If you're on Windows and an application doesn't show, the process is a little bit more um, complicated, but it is still very doable to access other applications. And the process for that is outlined in the manual. So if you go to that help menu up here and you go to the how-to guide, that is in the editing section. So once you choose an image to edit, you're gonna get, get a few options here. You can either edit the original, in this case, this would be the Canon RAW, or if I had gone ahead and made a few changes here in Mylio and wanted to edit it with those changes, I could edit a copy with Mylio adjustments. For this particular example, I'm gonna go ahead and choose edit original and choose continue. And that's gonna go ahead and launch Photoshop. And because this is a RAW file, it's gonna open it up in Adobe Camera RAW. If you're a Lightroom user or have used Lightroom in the past, these are the exact same controls. And this is actually my preferred way to get to those exact same tools without having to use the organizational aspect of Lightroom. So I still love my Adobe editing. This is just for me, a better way to get to those tools. So let's go ahead and start by, let's see, let's see what auto does. That's pretty nice. That actually gave it a little bit more depth, a little bit of color here in the sky. I'm gonna go down here to the color section and let's change that white balance to daylight. It's a little bit better. It's actually a cloudy day, so let's try cloudy. And I think that brought out a little bit more of that natural color that's already here. And let's go back up here to the light tool. Highlights, I'm gonna pull back down a little bit more. Shadows, maybe pull up a bit more. That looks pretty good. Whites and blacks. Now let's go down here to our effects. I'm gonna use a little bit of dehaze. And dehaze is great for cutting through images that are a little bit hazy or kind of foggy, but it also adds a really rich contrast. So in an image like this, it just adds a little bit of depth and a pop of color. If I take this too far, you can see that it starts to get really unnatural. But if you add just a tiny, tiny bit, it just adds a bit of richness. Clarity is gonna bring out some of that mid-tone contrast. So you see, especially down here in the foreground, this is starting to get some additional detail. And then texture is going to be the contrast in your brightest areas. So you can see as I bring this up, it's giving some more definition to the clouds. And I think that's looking really nice. From here, let's go ahead and I'm gonna just crop this because the top part of the sky, to me, doesn't add anything to this photo. And right now, this line between the, um, the mountains and the sky is almost dead center, which compositionally isn't ideal. So I'm gonna go ahead and crop this to a 16 by nine, which is more of a panoramic look. And go down here to 16 by nine. And I'm just gonna move that up. And then I can even move this in a little bit more to get that more. So the sky is in a top third, the foreground is in the bottom third, and that's just overall a more pleasing composition. From there, let's go ahead and I'm gonna do a little bit more work here just because I'm a perfectionist and this is what I like to do, I'm gonna to go to my sky here and I'm gonna create a mask. So I'm only affecting the sky and we can go down to, let's see our textures and our clarity. Maybe pull in a little bit more clarity, maybe pull in a little bit more dehaze. And then I'm going to duplicate this mask. I'm gonna click on the three dots here, duplicate and invert because I only want to have some changes here that affect the foreground. Now, because the sky has so much blue in it, I feel like this the foreground is a little bit too blue and I wanna make that a little warmer or bring out a little bit more yellow. So from here, I'm gonna to go to the temperature and pull that up and just add a little bit more warmth to that foreground. And I think that's looking really good. So from here, I can go ahead and say I'm done. And there's a couple of different ways to get out of Adobe Camera Raw. 
If I go down here and simply click done, that's gonna save my edits into that XMP file. But because Milio can't read Adobe's edits, they're saved there, it'll sync them, but you're not gonna see those edits in Milio. Instead, what I need to do is go up here to the export button. And I have a few presets here that I've created to get my images back to Milio. And I'm gonna walk you through exactly what these are so you can go ahead and recreate them if you choose to. So the first one you see here is a Milio display copy TIFF. Now you can save a display copy as a TIFF file, which is a really nice high quality archival file, or you can save it as a high quality JPEG. It's up to you what you wanna use and it depends for me what I wanna use that file for. An image like this, I might at some point wanna print this and print it large, maybe even do some further edits. So I want the highest quality file possible. And that's when I'm gonna choose a TIFF. Now, if this was just a snapshot, something I took for fun and maybe I was gonna share it on social media, I would probably do it as a JPEG. So you save it, see I have a preset here for a JPEG as well. So for this, I'm gonna do the TIFF and we're gonna go down some of these settings here. So destination, the key here is to save it in the same location. When you're saving a display image or an image that you want to stack in Mylio with the original, it has to go into the same folder where that original resides. And Adobe Camera Raw, Photoshop makes that very easy. You just choose save and same location. Select the folder. You don't have to select a folder. It's selected for you because you're putting in the same location. And you can go ahead down here under file name. Under document name, you're going to add a plus and do underscore display. And what that's gonna do is have your document name as it exists currently, and then add that underscore display for you at the end. And again, you can do this manually, totally fine. Next section down, this is where you choose if you want a TIFF, a JPEG, or something else. In this case, I chose TIFF. Um, I'm not doing any compression. I'm keeping all of my metadata intact and everything else down here is fine. I probably will go ahead and turn off output sharpening and then go ahead and click save. And what this is doing is creating a new TIFF file with that underscore display that's going to automatically stack back in Mylio with this image. So here's my image. I'm gonna go ahead and click out of this. You can see just by clicking the back arrow, it refreshed and there's my edited image. Now, if I look over here on the right again, I've got my CR3, which is my original raw. It's still preserved so I can at any time go back to that original photo. I have my edited TIFF and my metadata. So again, let's take a look here. Let me just say reveal and finder. And you'll see again here in the file system, there's that display TIFF that we just created in Adobe Camera Raw. Here's my original raw image and there's my metadata file. So that's how you create a display image in Mylio. Now, the other option you have when you're saving things from another editor, let me go ahead and jump back over here to Photoshop and go back here. If we did not include this underscore display, we just saved it back to the same location, you would then see those two files separately in Mylio Photos. You'd have your original raw there and you'd have your edited one next to it. As I said, there's no right answer. It's just a matter of what you want, how you wanna see your library. Mark, you've got your hand up. Go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, this this preset you've got is cool. I I honestly do not use display images, and part of it is because I've just never had time to learn about them. That's why I'm here. Um, <laughs> so I screen printed it while when you first brought it up. Mm -hmm. um, could you is this in the JPEG version in the manual, or can you show the J, your JPEG version? I can absolutely show my JPEG version. So it's the exact same settings. I think I've got the maximum. JPEG quality, and you just do a JPEG format there. So go ahead and grab a screen capture if you like. I got it. Thank you. You're welcome. This is this is really cool. I like it. <clears throat> yeah, I, I find it really helpful. And this is, for me, kind of my, my main workflow for most of my images. Now, there are times when I actually would prefer to have my original and edit next to each other. So I have these same presets, or actually just the one here for save as TIFF. That does the same thing. It just strips that underscore display. So I have the option with my presets and to set presets here in Adobe Camera Raw, you go ahead and do all of these settings here at the bottom and then you click on the drop down, and then you can choose save preset. So it's really quite easy and then you can come back and use that over and over. I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that for now since we already saved it. Once I've done that export, 
Now I can click done. And that's also going to save those changes in Adobe Camera Raw with that raw file. So I can go back and re-edit it later if I want to. So lots of flexibility there. And I find that to be a very, very helpful workflow. And I really actually kind of like how this picture turned out. So I'm going to go ahead and assign that a four star. And Randy, you've got your hand up. What's your question? Well, I've tried this process and then um, I wanted to, now that I got it back into Milio as a display edit or display photo, can I use any of Milio's edit tools to further edit it? Just if I missed something and just, I didn't want to go back. So I believe since it's um, a display image and edited with a third party application, what it's going to want you to do. So let me go ahead and just try this. Yep. It's going to ask you to duplicate the image. So Miley will duplicate that for you, and then you can work on the duplicate. But part of the reason that it does this is because it is preserving your original edit. So it's preserving that display image, and it's preserving your original raw file. So it's going to ask you to make a duplicate. OK. All right, let me take a look here at the chat, and we'll do a couple of other um, options a, here. Carol, you got your hand up. So now if you want to go back and re-edit it, you just go find it in Finder, or, or can you click on that and go back and re-edit in Lightroom or Photoshop? So now this that's a great question. Let me see what happens here, because I know the expectation here is that if I go ahead and say open in Photoshop, and I say I want the original RAW, we want to open up the original RAW, right? And what this did is it exactly came back here to Photoshop. It pulled in the raw file. Now, I believe this is a change that took, took place with the edit, with the um, update that went live yesterday. Earlier versions, it would do what you didn't expect it to do and it would open up that display copy. What this did was it opened up again in camera raw. It has all of my edits here that I made and I can further edit this and then even say open in Photoshop and go ahead and continue doing other edits if I like. So I'm very happy to see that that change got in there. So if you right click and you say you want to prefer the raw file, it will indeed go back into your file system. You don't have to go into Finder anymore to locate that raw file. You can do it straight from ILEO. And meanwhile, Lightroom or Photo Photoshop has saved your edits. Yep. Because when you click done here, all of these slider settings are saved in that XMP file. So when you reopen that raw file, of uh, Adobe Camera Raw Photoshop, is seeing that those edits are still there. So all of my, even all my masks that I did here, those are still there. That's pretty cool. I'm very happy to see that that, that fix is in the newest version. All right. So Lori says, it's my understanding you can only stack over raw files, correct? I tried stacking two JPEGs and it didn't work. Um, Lori, I have been able to stack different file types, not just raw files. I've done it with, um, HEIC files from Apple. I think I've done it with two separate JPEGs and had the one, you know, just have to make sure they're in the same folder and that you have the file name be the same. The second one, the display image, you just want to make sure you have that underscore display and that should work. I believe I have done that before. Um, we can always double check that, but in the past I have seen that work. So um, we might have to test that. Let's see here. Uh, Mark says for two JPEGs, they'll be side by side, not stacked. Have you tested that recently, Mark? It seems like it's worked for me. All right. So it looks like we covered all of the questions that are in the chat. Are there any other questions before we jump on to another example here? Yeah, Michael is asking, is this an Apple thing? No, not necessarily. So the first part of it was that Apple, when you're using Apple Photos, it does create an, a display image, which uses the same mechanism, but this doesn't have, this is not just exclusively Apple. So what I just showed with Photoshop, this is, a, that works on Windows as well, but Apple Photos does create their own display copies as well. So that's a couple of different instances you might see this appear in Mylia Photos. All right, so let's go ahead and do another example. So another application that I really like to use in Mylio or with Mylio is um, Topaz Photo AI. And this is an app that has a lot of problem solving features and helps me do things like when I crop something significantly, helps me upsize it, 
If something's a little bit soft, it helps make it sharper. Um, if it's really grainy or has a lot of noise, it can clean that up. And this is also great for working with historical photos as well. It even has the facial recognition that in that it will find a face and even make faces look better. So what I wanna do today is take a look at this little image of a chipmunk. This was in Valley of Fire that I captured last weekend. And this cute little guy was just posing for me all over the place and he desperately wanted some food, which I didn't have, but he was very friendly. But if I take a look at this image in its original form here, you can see that I cropped in significantly. So if I go back here to my info panel, you'll see here's my original resolution here at the top. And here's my cropped resolution. If I were to go to print this, I'd be pretty limited in how large I could print this because I have cropped it in so dramatically. I also made a handful of edits here in Mylio that I wanna take with this photo and make these better using Topaz Photo AI. So what I'm gonna do, let me go ahead and jump back over here to the info panel, not that that really matters. Actually, go back to edit and turn my edit back on. Now we're gonna go over here to the photo menu again and choose open with. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and choose Topaz Photo AI. Now, again, we could start here, we could go back and edit the original, but what that's gonna do is I'm gonna lose my crop and I'm gonna lose those edits that I made here in my Leo. So in this instance, I wanna do an edit a copy with my Leo photos adjustments. What happens here is Mylio is going to create a TIFF file with these different settings that I've chosen and place it next to the original. So I'm gonna go ahead and click continue. And let's go ahead and let that open up in Topaz Photo AI. Give it just a moment here. Uh, Angela's asking, can it open one eye a little to match your eye? Um, not quite sure I understand your question. Are you asking about Topaz uh, Photo AI? And I don't, if you're asking if that can open eyes, that one does not. Um, I have seen some tools in Photoshop that can kind of mimic that. They're AI-based tools that can open eyes, widen eyes, things like that. But Topaz doesn't do that. But it will clarify, like, if a, fa a face is very, um, it's just like if a photo is very degraded it'll pull out those details and make them much, much better. All right, so let's go ahead and jump back over here to Topaz. There we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and close that window. And here we go. Here's our little dude that we just looked at. And take a look here. So let's see here. Let me, uh, let, me just, let me close this and reopen it because I think, yeah, it opened it twice here. Nope, that's two different pictures. Never mind. All right. So we are on the autopilot settings. You can see that if I go in mouse over subject, my little chipmunk is selected, which is pretty cool. And just with its autopilot settings, meaning that looked at the picture and it decided what it thought was best, I can see here's the before and there's the after. Now it is upscaling it by 1.78x. I can go in here into the settings. I can say, let's go ahead and make that a 2x. Make it a little bit bigger there. And you can see it's up here and it's doing its enhancements. I'm also going to take a look here at the sharpening that it added. I feel like the sharpening is a little bit too strong. It's gotten to what I like to call crunchy. You can see the details here are just a little bit overdone. So I'm gonna grab that strength slider and I'm gonna pull that back, maybe right about there and let it go ahead and rerun its um, algorithms there. And that looks a lot more natural. So here's our before, and there's our after. And again, it's upscaled it, it's sharpened. If I needed to, if this picture was noisy or had, um, if I'd had shot this at a really high ISO and had a lot of grain, the remove noise could clean that up. If there were human faces, it would detect them and make them clearer. If, if there's text in an image, it'll go through and make that text more legible. It also does some adjustments for lighting and color. Um, you can play with those. I don't think that they're as good as other tools, but the problem solvers we have up here for upscaling, removing noise and sharpening, I feel are really second to none. So I'm gonna go ahead from here and say save. And this brings up another save window that has a few options we can look at. So it's gonna add, because I typed this in here, if, it, if I had started from scratch, this is what we'd have. And then I can just manually type in underscore display. And that's gonna go ahead and add that underscore display to my file name. Again, you wanna make sure it's saved to the original folder. 
You can choose your format. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and stick with a JPEG and we can go ahead and move that up to 100% quality. And you also have the option down here if you want to send that file that you're working on to Topaz to help them train their AI. Um, it's up to you if you wanna do that. I'm gonna go ahead in this instance and turn that off and say no, and then go ahead and click save. It's gonna go ahead and process that file. And then we can jump back over here to Milio. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the G key to go back to my grid. And you're gonna see here, we have our original. That is our, let's see here, where did it go? That was our original here that we cropped and edited. And then here with a much larger file size and our edits is our edited version. So, and if we look down here at the bottom, you'll see that we do have two separate files here for this image. That's because when we did that export from Milio to Topaz, we said we wanted to make a copy with the edits we applied in Milio. So that's where it created this TIFF file. Then when we saved our edits from Topaz, it created that JPEG display file. So this is a very non-destructive editing process that preserves your originals and preserves your steps as you go through. And you end up with your edits and so you're only seeing the edited version as opposed to seeing the unedited version sitting next to it, which is really nice. If you wanted to get back to that unedited TIFF, you can always find that in the file system like we showed you. So it uh, looks like John's asking about uh, doing this with Radiant. Absolutely, it does do it automatically and I can do a quick edit, um, edit with that. And let's see what else we've got here. Uh, Mark's saying that Luminar Neo can help with the eye issue that Angela's asking about. I know it can make eyes larger. I'm not sure if it can open an eye. I might be wrong on that. Um, let's go ahead and jump. Let me actually address something really quick with Luminar Neo. So using display images with files edited from Luminar Neo, it's possible, but it's not quite as easy. And the reason for that is when you go into the export menu in Luminar Neo, it doesn't give you an easy way to save back to that original folder. So you do have to navigate through your folder tree to find the folder where the original resides and put it in there. From there, you can go ahead and add that underscore display. Works beautifully. However, my preferred um, workflow with Luminar Neo is I just save it to the Luminar inbox and deal with having the two files side by side. It's much, much easier and faster than going and digging through file systems, but that's a personal choice. All right, so let's take a look here at Radiant. Let's go ahead and find a different image to play with here. And let's grab, one of these here, because these are pretty cool. Um, we saw these mountain goats again here in Valley of Fire. Unfortunately, they were not as cooperative as the chipmunk. They didn't really want to have anything to do with me. Um, they would not give my attention. <laughs> I kept trying to get one of them to look at the camera and they wanted no part of it, but they were still really cool to see. So again, I'm going to go up here to photo and I'm going to choose open with and choose radiant photo. I'm going to go ahead and open the raw file in this case and let that open. Radiant's gonna do its magic. Give it just a moment. Almost there, there we go. And we can go ahead and take a look here at what the automatic setting did. I feel like the color correction there was a little bit too strong, so I can go ahead and back off the color. See how that affects? I like it, bringing back some of the original color. I like that warmth. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go down to the depth. I usually add that here in my pictures. That just adds a little bit of extra contrast. If this was a portrait, light diffusion does beautiful things. We can go down here. We can see what the color contrast is doing. Turn that on and off. We can even turn that up a little bit if we want to. Oh, I think I like that actually even better. There's a little bit of sky here. We'll see if it recognizes it. Put a little bit of toning there in the sky. And put up a little bit more strength there. That's a minimal effect, okay? Portrait tools. I also then like to go over to the color grade section here in Radiant. And this is where I usually add a vignette. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click on that vignette tool. That puts in a nice soft vignette. I can go ahead and pull the blend back a little bit on that if it's too strong. Looks pretty good. And let's say we're done. We wanna save this. From here, we just go up here to the save button. And that's going to pull up the save menu here in Radiant. All right, well, that's processing. We take a look here at Yolanda's question. Let's see here. 
should have pulled up the same menu. Might've had to, let me go ahead and hit done. Oh, let's see here. There we go. You actually have to click on the little settings here. So it's gonna, if you just click on save, it's gonna go to the last used settings you had, which for me, were an underscore display. So it's got your file name, underscore display, and again, saved in the original folder. So that is gonna go exactly where I want it to be. It's gonna be a high quality TIFF file in the sRGB color space. And again, if I click save here, it's just gonna do it again. So I'm gonna choose cancel. And then if I go back to, to Milio and click that back arrow, there you can go. As soon as I click that back arrow, it refreshes. And I now have my CR3, my TIFF display image and my XMP file. All right, Yolanda, having multiple views of the same photo scrambles my brain. That's why I want just one view of each photo. Is it possible after editing to create the underscore display image? Um, if you have them already in Milio, what the, be the best way to do that would probably be to move the edited versions to a folder outside of Milio temporarily, add that underscore display, and then put them back in. However, I'm not sure I would really recommend doing that because that could actually get things scrambled up even more if things weren't done exactly right. And here's another thing to keep in mind. In the future, I'm hoping towards the end of this year, Milio is going to have additional stacking controls. So what this is gonna do is for those of us who have multiple files that all relate to the same thing, let's say here I've got you know, a series of images that I bracketed. They're all different exposures of the exact same thing that I took on a tripod. Let me go ahead and just zoom this in here so you can see it. And these are all meant to be together. In the future, we're gonna be able to right click on this and we're gonna be able to stack them together so you're only seeing one photo for that entire stack of images. Um, as far as the exact mechanisms for that yet, I haven't seen it in action, but it is coming. So I would honestly recommend Yolanda that you hold off on that because there is better control coming for that soon. I know I'm very excited about it too. That is one of those things in Lightroom that I actually really miss is the ability to stack because I do so many bracketed images. And you can see here in my library, I've got things at multiple exposures throughout. That's because for pretty much every image I shoot when I'm shooting landscapes and things like that, I'm shooting three to five frames for every shot. So being able to stack them together and have those grouped is gonna be awesome. All right. Is there anything that I've missed or other questions that you guys have? <laughs> yes, I agree. Stacking is going to be great. I'm so excited for that. All right. Any other questions about editing or display images? I hope I explained it well. And the fact that the potential to do this, to stack these images together, it's possible. You can absolutely do it. And if that's the workflow you choose, it's wonderful. If you choose not to do that, and you want to have those images side by side. There's also nothing wrong with that. So it's Definitely a personal preference, what works best for your workflow and how you like to look at things. All right. Angela, do you yes. happen to use on one? I do have on one. Do you, do you use it much? I haven't recently. <laughs> so I, I've, I've been a licensed user of it for, I think, four years now, and mm -hmm. I've never, never adopted it. A, they don't allow sub albums to be synced, which you know, my album issues. <laughs> yep. So it's a dead body before it gets started, but it wasn't reliable. That was the worst part. It was slow and unreliable. And I have a really fast computer. Yeah. Uh, this latest version is really solid and the masking in it. I think is there's one feature that even beats Adobe. Um, really? called in circle and okay. I haven't tried a workflow from Milio to on one and back yet. I'm still playing with on one as an editor because I've still got my 20 gig Adobe license. It's not going to run out for forever. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I've just, I've, I stayed with it as an editor, but um, I, I also happen to be a licensed on one user and it, the new New masking is pretty awesome. It really is. It's really good. But I haven't tried a round and back workflow. And, and I also like non-destructive. So some of these make it easy. Others do not. Yeah. Um, I also am a licensed online user. I just haven't used it in a while. I, 
you know, some of their filters in the, um, their on one effects, I would use that a lot as a plugin. Yep. Um, I, you know, I, I liked the quality, the visual quality of their big softy vignette yes. on their dynamic contrast. It was a wonderful tool. I really love that. Like the um, glow. So. Yeah. So yeah, you can see here, I've got a bunch of on one stuff. There's yeah. my on one 2024. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, that's the same. See if it makes it, see if it makes it catalog for me. <laughs> <laughs> Because I think you can do it one of two ways. You can have it just be like a file browser, or you can have it make a catalog. And I don't think this um, will do a catalog automatically. Okay. Right? But it will let you edit it. I think, in fact, I think you'll be in edit mode when you get here. Yeah, you are. Excellent. Yeah. I go ahead and close up their learning hub. All right, nice. So we'll go ahead and do some lens corrections. Um, so their AI here. Let's go ahead and see what this does. Brilliance. Brilliance is pretty spectacular. Oh, okay. <laughs> and if you open it up, you'll see it created presets. There we go. Or excuse me, regions for floral sky and water. I don't know why it thinks there's water there, but <laughs> it's a little confusing. Okay, but, I see. Yeah, but you can get rid of them if you want. And the masking is is pretty impressive. I, I'm not nice. a total lover of AI yet. I'm I'm getting there, I think. <laughs> You know, I've I've really liked this program for a really long time. I've just worked with so many different things that it's one that I I get into every now and again. And I just don't, I because there's so many different tools I have available to me. It's kind of overwhelm of options. I know. And this, um, and this one is probably one of the most comprehensive to learn and use of all of them. There's, I, I, there's a lot here. Yeah, but yeah I, there's that dynamic contrast. I've just always thought that that did such a beautiful job. Yeah. And then again, their their filter um, vignette, that big softy vignette right there, that big softy. It's just a you know, those it, two it, it, those two adjustments right there for me is the reason I will always keep yeah. <laughs> on one on my computer. You know, when you go to come back, how does it behave? You hit the no 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 that lower right corner, the, the blue check mark. So I would think so that saves them all is that it performs and leaves the edit. That would probably save it in the. I think they make their own sidecar files. Um, yes. um, and we do not, Mylio does not sync those. Okay. So we need, you need to export them. Yeah. Got it. Now I believe that there are requests in the forum for uh, Mylio to sync those. And we have a lot of different file types that we are looking at adding to have synced. Like I know, um, is it Nick? I think has some on one definitely has theirs. Some of these other applications that have their own raw editors have their own unique sidecar files. And so a lot of people would like those to be synced with Mylio as well. So I know that's on the roadmap. I don't know how far out, um, but hopefully soon, because that's that's one really nice thing about using the Adobe system is it does save it to that XMP, which yes. Mylio does sync. Mm -hmm. But from here, we could go ahead and just do um, an export. And again, same folder as original. And you can probably put in, let's see here, subfolders after export. We put in. Oh, nowhere to put in display. No. Who? Unless. Okay, that's. Nope. nope. Yeah, you can't put in the underscore display. So your only option here is oh. to do it next to. Yep. All right. Well, that's good to know. Looks like there's a couple of new questions here. Can you, Harold says, can you unstack the display image to see both the display and the original? Um, not easily, to, to be perfectly honest. If you go into the file system and just simply remove the underscore display, what I've noticed is that Mylio just gets confused. Um, so usually what I would do is turn safe delete off and then go into the file system, move that display image outside of the folder that Mylio is looking at and let Mylio update to where it's no longer seeing that edited version. And then elsewhere, remove the underscore display from that file and then put it back and let Mylio rescan. I don't think that's a very, um, that's not a very good workflow. Honestly, if there's if you have a lot of images that you wanna do that with, I would wait until we get that stacking control in Mylio and see if we have a way with that to address that concern. That would be my number one goal with that, like to be able to do that without having to go into the file system and move things around. Because again, that just leads to the potential for creating errors. Um, 
what happens if you accidentally delete an XMP file? Will it recreate? So that's a great question. Um, Milio will recreate an XMP file from the information that's here. Like if you have stuff stored here in the info panel, Milio will recreate it or pull it in from another device. However, if you have edits from, let's say Adobe Camera Raw also in there, Milio doesn't know those. It doesn't have those in its own catalog. So you might lose those edits. But the information that you have here in Milio, as long as your Milio catalog is still good and preserved, it should be able to regenerate those. All right. What else have we got here? All right, it looks like we've covered all the other questions. Is there anything else that I've missed? Well, this has been a fun one. I'm always happy to talk about editing and dive into some of these questions and see where we land on some of these edits because it's just, it's just super fun. Is there anything else, Mark? Sound like you're about to say something. Sorry, I was coughing and getting my mic oh. turned up fast enough. <laughs> No thank you for doing this. Thank you for doing this, especially with those presets. That's really helpful. Um, I hadn't You're looked. Welcome. I hadn't honestly looked in the manual yet to see if those were already there. But the reason I came I to don't this, I think they are. Those are just little things I worked out for my own workflow that I popped in there. I was like, oh, let me just make my life easier. I you guess I could document to, them to help make everyone else's life easier too. You should talk to whoever wrote the manual. I know. <laughs> I don't know. She can be a little stubborn sometimes. <laughs> All right. Thanks again. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. I hope to see you guys all at our webinar in the next hour. We're going to be talking about the new version for Mylia Photos. Um, one thing I will mention is that um, the, the update came out yesterday. If you haven't already run the update, please do so and make sure you update all of your devices. Um, cause a lot of times if, if things start getting stuck, stuck and things aren't syncing, one of the biggest things that we found is that you have devices that are on different versions. So make sure all of your devices get updated. They don't have to be done all necessarily at the exact same time, but you'll want to make sure over the next day or two, you get everything up to date. So with that, I will leave you to it. Give you guys a chance to get up and go get a drink of water. And then hopefully we'll see you at the next hour. Bye everyone. Thank you, Laurie, for helping out.